Alzheimer and the law. My name is Michael Davis. I'm a probate, uh, probate lawyer uh, specialized in Spanish wills, estate planning, probate and inheritance related litigation for expats and Spanish uh, property owners in, owners in Spain. I've been in practice for over 25 years. Okay, this is a very uh, delicate subject. But I feel very strongly about it. So I'm going to explain uh, what I think uh, you should do uh, if uh, one of you has been, if you're a married couple uh, or a couple, and one of you has been <clears throat> diagnosed recently with uh, Alzheimer's from the legal point of view, from the legal point of view. I recommend that you go and see your lawyer and discuss various things. Number one, I would discuss wills. Why? Because if one of you has just been diagnosed, but still, of course, has consent, and hopefully uh, uh, um, it will be many years before, before uh, you become, that person becomes incapacitated. At the moment, they've still got consent, but uh, it's the time to just go through things, and put everything in good order, and then obviously hope that it all takes a, a long time and many years. So why the wills? Well, if you're a married couple and you've left everything to each other and then down to the children, you may want to contemplate changing this. Because, um, for example, uh, if, for example, it's the, the husband that has been diagnosed, uh, his wife, let's say it's called Mary and John, Mary may want to contemplate not naming her husband as the beneficiary, instead naming her children. Why? Because if Mary passes away first, and by then John has already got advanced Alzheimer, it's going to take a long time for anybody to access money that may be needed to look after John. So maybe you want to contemplate leaving your estate directly down to the kids so that if you pass away before John, the children can have access to the money, et cetera, to be able to look after John. OK, there are different variables that one can play around with this, different variations, but that's sort of the, the idea. So that is what I would suggest regarding the wills. Also, uh, John may have not you know, dealt, touched his will for many years. So now he's got a chance to redo his will if he wants to. In other words, if he's still in control. He can maybe uh, reflect on his will. Maybe his, his circumstances have changed since he did a will previously, or maybe he's never made a will. Now is the time to get all that sorted out and out of the way so that then you can forget about it for many years. Okay, so the other thing that you should talk to your solicitor about is powers of attorney. Now, if you're in Spain, uh, once somebody becomes incapacitated and as they lose consent, they, they no longer be able to convince a notary that they know what they're, what they're doing. In other words, they, if it gets to that point, they would not be able to, for example, sell the property in Spain, sign the sales deed. Or at that point, they would no longer be able to grant a power of attorney to anyone to do it for them. So in Spain, it would only, if, not a powers of attorney not done beforehand like i'm going to suggest now uh, if it, it gets to the point where you know we're into the future now john is in really bad shape he's no longer got consent and now you need to sell the, the villa the property in spain <clears throat> you go to the notary the notary says no you can't sign you can't grant a power of attorney to anyone so the only procedure in spain is an incapacitation procedure through the courts and in the end the judge <clears throat> will say who can sign for john sign the sales, etc. Now, this is very impractical and can cause you lots of problems, lots of headaches, because um, the court procedure can take a long time. And it may end up in a result where the judge says, well, yes, you know, uh, uh, you can, you, that your wife can sign everything for you, but if there's a sales deed, it's so important that I need to co-sign it. It could just become complicated. So the solution is, well, John's still okay. And he can, now he's in control. Uh, he can make decisions now regarding what happens later. So I would recommend that he signs a power of attorney to his spouse, now that he's still okay, to handle all his affairs uh, after he becomes incapacitated and no longer has got consent. <clears throat> that is the way to do it. So basically the way we, all, we would suggest it is, is uh, uh, basically both of you reassess your wills. We go through the, you know, the possibilities 
And with the powers of attorney, now is the time to do reciprocal total powers of attorney between you. So if one or the other falls ill or is incapacitated, the other can act. So mainly you can sell the property, you can do anything. We've, we've seen too many times situations where, for example, a person like uh, John loses consent Mary needs to sell the property because she needs to, she wants to, needs the money to be able to pay the home that John's in, or she may decide that it's just too much now. She can't stand being in Spain anymore with John being so poorly. She wants to move back to the UK and she's trapped. She can't sell the property because John has no longer got consent. And now we've all got to wait for a capacitation procedure to be followed through the courts etc. In other words, a horrible subject, um, but within it being a horrible subject, looking at the wills and looking at the powers of attorney at an early stage is the right thing to do, because that is what will give someone like John the maximum control, because he'll be able to establish his wishes now, if because they may have changed since the last time he made his will, um, and, and also decide who will make the decisions for him and not let a judge decide in 15 years time who can sell the property and things like that. I hope you found this video uh, useful about, about, about Alzheimer and the law. I know it's a, it's a, it's a horrible subject, but that's, uh, uh, it, it, I think it's something that needs to be said. Too many people don't deal with these things in a timely manner and and they, they later regret it. If you found this video useful, please hit the subscribe button so that more potential clients can, can help us. Maybe they'll find the, the videos uh, useful. And um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you for watching.